solve the equation. 6x plus 12 equals 0. Well, the goal for solving an equation, the goal, what's our goal for solving an equation? Um, our goal, the easiest, fastest way to state it, most compact way to st state it, is x equals a number. x equals a number. We want all the x's on one side of the equal sign and all the numbers to appear on the other side. And it, and it doesn't actually matter. We could let x appear on the right side and let numbers appear on the left side. It doesn't matter which of these two goals we make um, be our goal for any particular equation. The other part, however, is we need the coefficient, the number part of the variable term by the end to be a positive 1. Positive 1 x equals a number, whether the x is on the left or on the right. In this case, for the equation that we're given to work upon, we see x's only appearing on the left side of this equation, the left side. Each equation has a left side and a right side. Since the x's only appear on the left side, let's go ahead and make this be our goal. We'll have less work to do by the end. The less work we do, the faster we'll get the problem done efficiently and effectively and move on say during a test, an exam, move on to the next problem uh, sooner. So let's look at what we're going to do to you know, make the x's appear only on the left and move, it have the, essentially the effect of moving the numbers to the right side and get closer and closer to this goal of x equals a number. Okay, well it turns out that the best approach we can make for operating upon an equation if we want to make the numbers disappear from the left this 12 for example if I want to make it disappear from the left side I'm going to use it against itself somehow uh, with using an operation of arithmetic I notice that this 12 is connected to the 6x the x term with addition the only operations I'm allowed to use, you know, in in an equation that are that are compatible with addition are add or subtract. I can choose from add or subtract. We're going to use this number against itself. I am obligated to use only add or subtract. And then I ask myself, well, if if I treat this the number as it, as it exists on the left side as a positive 12, I'm going to go ahead and choose negative 12 because it will have the effect of eliminating the number positive 12 from the left side. Positive 12 minus 12 makes 0. The other aspect of an equation is whatever I do to an equation on one side I must do to the equation on the other side. Since we subtracted 12 from the left side to eliminate the number, we must subtract 12 from the right side to balance the equation out. This represents a balance. Every equation is like a balance. Whatever we do to one side we must do to the other to keep the equation, the two sides of the equation, in balance. So on the right side 0 minus 12 is negative 12. Here's the equal sign that's always between the two sides. We haven't done anything with this 6x but we have eliminated the number, uh, the number of positive 12 through this subtraction. So whether I put plus here or minus here, 6x plus 0 is 6x, or 6x minus 0 also is 6x, equals negative 12. So what we've accomplished at this point is to have the effect of moving the numbers, the numbers to the right side. And we have the variable isolated on the left side, however, the number next to the variable by the end needs to be a positive 1. Right now, the number next to x, the, the coefficient of the variable, is not a positive 1, it's a 6. It's a positive 6. And what we are charged to do by the end is to make sure that the number next to the variable is a positive 1. Now, instead of 
uh, how two things are connected with add or subtract, like it was with the 12. The 6 and the x are connected with multiply. The only operations of arithmetic I'm allowed to do to an equation when I'm trying to operate on this 6, we're going to use this 6 against itself somehow. When this 6 is connected to, the, to its neighbor with multiply, I can use only, I'm restricted to using only multiply or divide. So if I was to multiply by 6, the 6 would turn into a 36. That's not a positive 1. But if I choose to divide 6 by itself, then what do we get? 6 divided by 6 is positive 1. That achieves our, our last goal in solving the equation. Uh, to make a positive 1 coefficient of x. However, for every equation, what we do to the left side, we must do to the right side so that we keep the equation in balance. So we divide the right side by 6 also, and then follow the rules of division. Negative divided by a positive makes negative. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Now, with you know we, we've achieved our goal, positive 1x equals a number, positive 1x equals negative 2 we would call this the potential solution. It's only a potential solution because we haven't checked it in the original equation. We should check. We should check our potential solution to make sure that when we walk out of a test or an exam that we feel good that we've actually uh, achieved the correct answer and here's what we do to check a potential solution. We say we think. We think the potential. It makes it, it gives it the potential. We think x equals negative two. So let me change colors here. So we go to the original equation: six x minus uh, plus twelve equals zero. We're about to substitute the value that we arrived at for x, and we're about to replace it by opening up parentheses when we say the x uh, variable we write empty parentheses in the rest of the equation now we believe that the solution could most likely be negative 2 so we put it in place we replace x with the negative 2 in parentheses write a question mark over the equal sign and then begin to simplify the both sides of the equation until we arrive at either a true or a false statement. Let's see what happens. PEMDAS says we must multiply before addition. PEMDAS, the M appears above the A. Positive times negative makes negative. 6 times 2 makes 12. There's the multiply is complete. Stay on the left side. I owe somebody $12. I have $12 to pay them back. That results in a 0. On the right side this whole time, equals 0 has been uh, has existed. Now we say, does, here's where the question mark comes in, does 0 equal 0? What we would respond to is yes, any number equals itself. This is a true statement. The only number that we could drop into an equation that, that makes a true statement in math, for, for this equation there is only one number that is possible. That number is negative 2. So we say in the end mathematically that the solution set contains the solution. The solution is the number that you drop into an equation. Any number that you drop into an equation results in a true statement like 0 equals 0. This is the you know, referred to as the solution. It doesn't have the potential anymore. It is the solution. So we go over to the answer choices and select the answer D.